Um, that'd be Dundee, um, as a lot of people would. I think the way Dundee really um, exposed Tassie Hip Hop was a, a lot through the battle scene as well, like him and Greeley both. Um, they got a lot of battles out there, and Dundee also did a lot of music at the time as well. But um, when I first started rapping, I mean, I was just rapping in my bedroom by myself. Like, I was listening to Hilltop Hood, so I was listening to Tupac. And it was really difficult for me to actually, like, think too much outside my box at the time. So, and it was my sister. My sister's 10 years older than me. And being a bit of a party head around Hobart and stuff and hitting clubs, she actually um, said, oh, you, do you know Dundee? Like, you know, he's a good mate of mine. I'm like, no, I don't. So she got up on her phone, showed me all his battles, showed me some of his music, and I was sitting back thinking, wow, like, there's actually dudes rapping in Tassie. And then um, Straight was actually my second exposure. Like, so I hadn't met Dunners yet, but um, a mate of mine named AJ actually heard a track I recorded in college when I was 17. And he said, man, like, I know a dude called Stray, like, you know, he's really into the hip hop, you know, you should hook up with him. So Stray and I start talking, I left on it, he lives in Burnie. And, um, and I'd left school by that stage. So I went, so, and I talked to Stray and I said, man, could you record me? He was like, yeah, if you want to come up and record, no worries. So I jumped on a bus for four and a half hours to go all the way up to Burnie, of all places, up, up the top end of the state. And Stray recorded my tracks. He even gave me a beat to record over at one point. And he essentially educated me. Like, Stray told me about all of the heads in Hobart. While I was up in Burnie, I wasn't even in Hobart. So he told me about Draz, Scourge, Epicenter, Fexy, Ames, like, um, and even, like, Luminous Inc., like, you know, it was even being tossed around at the time. Like, and it's all of these names that like I'm thinking there's actually a community going on here and then all of a sudden I meet all these dudes in Launceston so you got Cruz and Lonnie like that are current dudes you know in their 20s rapping now like Static, Tyrant, 42 South which is um, Prefix and Jester um, and there was even a dude called Fierce that was rapping for a while up there and you just realise that you know all of a sudden from the space of 12 months I went from being in my room to rapping and all of a sudden I was doing shows and recording tracks with people from all over the state and I realised this hip hop thing is a massive community and there's probably about 50, 60 recording performing artists essentially we're, we're running at one time probably all across the state that was about 2013, 2014 was my first four years of exposure that was about yeah. when I was meeting all these heads and, um, and they were really good years. I remember feeling such a strong sense of community. And I felt like this was where I was meant to be my whole life. Because there was all of these people and I'd just meet them and shake their hand. And because we both, you know, did hip hop or something, we'd common ground straight away. And I don't think there was a person that I didn't see eye to eye to or get along with. And I'd, I'd probably say that's still pretty much the case. <laughs> yeah. Well, I. When you say the worst gig, I can't think of a worse, a bad gig. I can't think of a bad one. They've all been good because, I mean, I don't I know it sounds corny, but it's like any chance you get to rap, it's kind of good. You know what I mean? There's, it's, there's always shit stuff that happens on the night, but it's like, oh, I was still doing a show, like that's something. So it's like, the most memorable one easily was when Dundee, which, you know, thank him very much for this till the day I die. Asked him to be my hype, asked me to be his hype man at the Bliss and SO show when he, um, he won the support act for that. And that was in 2014. And this is when Bliss and SO had just released, I'm pretty sure it was uh, some circus flying, you know, flying circus tour or something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. It was like, you know, it's hard to keep track because them dudes pump out tunes, but like, it was, it was, one, it was one of their tours and a horror show there, Seth Century, it supported CK Jones, played to probably about three and a half thousand people down at Macquarie Wharf. And I was so nervous. I was pacing up and down, like, you know, my, I remember my mate, actually my DJ at the time, who was like doing cuts for me and stuff live, was actually working the merch tent out the front, so I remember going out to the merch tent, scabbing ciggies off him, just being like, oh, pacing back and forth, smoking, saying, I can't fuck this up, can't fuck this up. Luckily, we didn't fuck it up. Everyone loved it, and, um, yeah, the adrenaline rush you get from three and a half thousand people having a group and just looking at you. Oh, it's scary, but it's so worth it. And to be honest, after that, like, all of the gigs have been great, like, and... My second favourite gig 
would be one where there was like barely anyone there. It was about 10, 15 heads there. But every single one of these 10 and 15 heads was either a graffer or a rapper. And they've been supporting me since day one. Like I could, I could, I could look at them all and I just, like you were, you used to like my song on Facebook like back in 20, 2013 or something. This was only recently. And this small group was there, like it was like 12 o'clock at night, I played so late. And these dudes just stayed the whole set. They were nodding their heads along, like shaking their hands and stuff at every beat. They were even like requesting tracks that they knew of mine. And it just, and it, these were dudes I've known for years, like you know what I mean? And it, and it just blew me out, like, like I, I just realised in that moment I wouldn't want to be with anyone else. Like you know what I mean? This was like such a special group of dudes. And, they're, and they're, these are only young cats, like you know what I mean? These are these aren't even like full, you know, heads as you call it. But they're just like dudes that support like motherfuckers, you know. And it just like it melts my heart to see shit like that because they could be anywhere in the world. They could be anywhere in Hobart, partying it up. But they decided to come to like that dingy club, pay their fucking five dollars to get in, and pay for the overpriced beer. And they stuck with us and they showed support. And that was like one of the realest things I've ever seen.